All right, just a quick update on our little PCBs. All right, you might be familiar with our PCB project. These are PCBs that house seven cells in a row uh, in series to make 24 volts. And this is a system that is scalable. So you can make little packs sort of like this one here, or you can make huge packs sort of like these guys here, right? And so these are pretty uh, versatile. You can put connectors here. Uh, it's got fusing. It's got pretty redundant fusing all over the place. Here's more trace fusing to connect all these cells into the next uh, boards and stuff. And also you can use different types of battery um, holders, right? These are the simplest, the most affordable ones, but you could also do, you know, for a 1C uh, continuous output, but you could also do these guys that are surface mount and they have better contacts that can do 2C operation. And you could also mount them uh, double-sided on the PCB here, right? So, so that helps with making the battery system uh, as compact as possible. But we also have uh, other stuff along with the main PCB that is made to hold batteries. Let's look at the other boards. All right, because people are going to be building large battery packs with this scalable system, then safety is pretty important, right? And so because of that, then we've developed also the BMS module, right? And this one, is a board that fits in the system and it allows you to use these off the shelf like e-bike uh, BMSs. This is our 20 amp rated and we have these uh, used in parallel. So then you can do about 60 amps, but because these are, you know, they're kind of budget um, units, you know, BMS units, then uh, I recommend people run about 50 amps can maximum on each board like that so that these don't burn up right because they can i guess be low quality now why are we using low quality uh bmss well i because they're everywhere uh they're easy to get and by using three of them they'll be redundant so even if one fails then you still have backups in the system right well if that's going to be a good idea or not i think only time will tell but in our testing, it's showing that it's it's working, right? So along with the BMS board, we also have the other BMS, which is a battery management system, right? So this is uh, this is a battery uh, uh, this battery management system, and this is a battery monitoring system, right? So there's two different things. This is actively will step uh, and disconnect the battery if anything bad is happening, if the voltages are wrong. If the power output is too high, if there's a short, uh, if the batteries are, you know, on balance, in balance, then, you know, this are supposed to turn on. They have MOSFETs in here and they're supposed to turn off and disconnect the battery, right? But also you never know what's happening. That's the biggest problem with the BMSs is that you never know. There's no feedback on these kind of BMSs. And the only systems that have feedback are the ones that are much, much more expensive, sort of like these guys, right? This is probably the best system out there, but it's because uh, it gives you this little screen that, you know, has instructions. It tells you how to set the batteries. It lets you, it has a user interface built in that lets you walk, uh, that walks you through the entire setup. And it's easy to follow. You don't have to have a computer. You don't have to know any coding. You don't have to encode any, you know, any equipment. This, it's all in here, right? And so I think all these systems should be like these, but unfortunately they're not, right? Including like most of these systems come like this, where they come with the USB cable and then you have to have a PC that runs, you know, I don't know, some serial program so you can put in there or, you know, so something that is, can be intimidating if you're not used to that, right? So because of that, we're, I'm building this system here, which requires no coding. It's just a bunch of parts. It has these uh, LM3914N chip that it's already coded. All you have to do is connect it. And it's very, very simple circuit here. And then that'll give you uh, status, uh, graph status, uh, well, in a graphical form of what your batteries is doing. So let's test this 
right now. These batteries here, I chose them because of their voltage, right? This one's at three volts. This one's like at 3.2 volts, uh, 3.5, uh, and so on, right? All the way to like four, 4.1, 4.2. And so they are all over the place. Let's connect this guy here. Come on, man. Bam, and there we go. That is what you're going to see. Uh, basically, when the battery is fully discharged, or what we consider to be fully discharged in a power wall setting at three volts, then the lights are off, right? So if any of these uh, bar graphs are off, that means your battery is lower. Your battery is pretty much empty, right? And then 3.2, Right, so that means that 3.1 should be probably one of these LEDs on 3.2, 3.5. It kind of works out that way, and I think this one is 4. Point, no, this is 4, and then 4.1, it's fully, and then 4.2, it's actually probably, you know, if it had another LED up here, then it would be there, right? But because we want our batteries to last a long time, we want our cells to last a long time, then probably a direct i would i'm going to recommend that most people use their systems between three volts and four 4.1 volts right and so 4.1 volts it will be like this so from fully you know 10 leds on to to no leds on it'll be three to 4.1 which i think is a great range to have uh to be able to you know, make our batteries last a long time. So this is really simple. Like if you look at the, uh, if you look at the uh, the parts list here, it's like, you know, it's like 20 cent chips with 26 cent, you know, LEDs. The PCB could, is gonna be about two bucks. The connectors, you know, a few cents and a couple other dollars. I think like the whole, this whole thing, this whole module would be about $5 worth of parts, but then you're gonna have to, you know, it's a, it's a uh, open source project, right? I didn't even, I kind of threw the idea out there and someone in the community, in this case, Sven Trov or, or Strove, I don't know. Hopefully I don't butcher that his name that much. Uh, he took it upon himself to design this board and now I'm testing it. Now I do, you know, it's still a work in progress. This is the first iteration of this board and I do have some recommendations. Like for example, Maybe the original design had these as uh, trimmers, right? Trim pots. And so there would be two per channel here. And so there would be 14 of them. And in order to get this, then you'd have to set each one of these trim pots, which is really hard to get and to calibrate. And it's tedious and it's gonna be really hard to get all of them to match to each other. Like. It, I think it's better if we just choose some, uh, you know, choose the, the values that best do this, like I have done here, right? And by the way, here are the values. When I, I set the trim pots and then I measure the outputs of that and this is what I got on those. And then I just chose the closest uh, resistors that I can find. And so I ended up using a 39K there, a 15K, a 1.5K and a 3.9K, which is crazy because they're kind of symmetrical, like 15, 1.5, 39, uh, and 3.9K, right? So I think those are good values that we should put, which probably mark those there. Uh, and then, you know, these are for the 3.7 uh, chemistries. You know, if you want to do use one of these guys for lithium iron phosphate, the 3.3 uh, volt, then we should probably also put the, the values of those uh resistors in there so i probably would suggest that we change that on the on the design here and put the values in there so when then you're putting them together then you don't get confused right uh i would also i think i would yeah i would suggest getting rid of this this is for like a uh a dip switch in here right just to to keep the count the parts count uh to a minimum right and really i don't see a reason to have a dip switch here um you know the fuses are okay because you know you gotta be you know you gotta fuse stuff uh also another recommendation i would recommend uh rounding the corners here uh i i am going to do that on our my boards too because once you start building 
large large towers like this and you're handling them the sharp corners are just really bad they can kind of mess your hands up they can mess stuff up and there's just no need to have really sharp corners so uh, i would suggest rounding up so they match eventually my system uh, also because we have some space here i would also recommend putting a three digit like uh voltage uh you know little unit that goes here Eventually, what I envision is people that are going to have one little tower like this, they can mount it there, right, at the very top of the tower. But for big boxes like this ones, then I will probably envision this going on the actual, you know, on the actual panel. And then with that, I think I'm going to make a hole in the panels and then put a dark uh, plexiglass panel so that you can't see any of the components, but you can only see the... Uh, you know the 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 graphs here um also we probably need to put like some kind of circuit in here that you can put a button that latches on for a few seconds and then it it you know and then it turns off so that this thing is not continuously uh on and it uses uh you know waste of energy right we don't really need it to be on the entire time you should be able to walk up to your battery system and then click a button and then it'll you, you can see where the batteries are at and you know you can see if the bms you know system is doing its job you can just monitor it and then walk away right so those are my recommendations this is good stuff we're almost there we're getting so close i'm ready so close to actually release a full video explaining how to start how to start from beginning to end to make you know some of these large uh, battery uh, systems packs that are like you know starting at about four kilowatt hours all the way to like 10 kilowatt hours uh, but also have all this implementation right this is kind of rudimentary but it's easy to use you don't need to code you don't need to have any special knowledge other than just be able to follow some instructions and in how to solder a few parts in here and it's really economical at five dollars you'll be able to put one of each on these on uh, one of your boxes right because you're it's like you know five dollars worth of parts why not right of course i'm open to having something more advanced in the future like with the arduino and stuff something you can you know i don't know something that that you can program or whatever but of course it has to be really easy uh for pretty much like anyone that's interested in having a battery to do and so if you have a system like that or you're developing or you're you're watching this and you say i can i can build that i can build a system that's really easy that's a standalone that it doesn't require an external pc and some other you know knowledge to to program it and to get it running uh then yeah contact me put, put post it in the comments in this video and then you know we'll we'll venture into that sort of stuff but for now this is perfect i like this this is easy Everyone can build it. Everyone can use it. And that's what we needed. We just need to see at a glance, look at our, at our battery system and see how it's doing. If it's balanced, if it's charged or if it's fully discharged, you know, if it's, if all of them are in the middle, then you know, you, your pack is around the middle. Well, I don't know. It's not linear, but yeah, you know that it's, you know, somewhere in the middle. It's not fully charged or fully discharged, right? So, but the most important is to let you know, if you see your pack like this, you know there's trouble because this one is fully discharged and this one is fully charged so if you were to charge this pack right now then you know these right here would get damaged because they would get over overcharged right because they all charge evenly and so you'd have to figure out how to balance them and then the next thing would be like why isn't the bms system balancing right so it would show you graphically visually show you a, pr a problem because this is designed to do something and to prevent this right here but if you see it then something happened right so that's kind of redundancy in the safety of these batteries all right thank you for watching this video this is just a quick update uh on what the system that we're designing and that's soon to be released so that we can all build a battery diy power walls uh off grid or grid tie you know all right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.